part two of my top 25 favorite Angry Beavers episodes. And as always, it's the final 10. And I'm also going to kind of cheat a little bit on this list because there are a lot of tied entries here. And mostly because since Angry Beavers is a Nicktoon and even one of the most hilarious Nicktoons that I've ever watched, there are always bound to be moments that are just so made of pure hilarity and just made of pure wit and class that it's actually kind of tough for me to pick one over the other as I pretty much find a lot of episodes enjoyable just the same. Hence, that's why there are a lot of tie entries on this list. So with that said, let's get on with the final 10. At number 10, we have all five Muscular Beaver episodes. Now, Muscular Beaver was a superhero that Daggett really loved and really looked up to and even wanted to portray as well. In fact, he is pretty much a hardcore Muscular Beaver fan. And Muscular Beaver is pretty much the Beaver's version of Superman, in which he has super strength and fights for peace, justice, and the American way. And, well, with this and all the other episodes, we really see Daggett's constant exploits as muscular beaver battling, like, different foes like Tobot and even the main villain and even a lot of different foes, usually portrayed by a lot of different characters in the show. And I thought that a lot of episodes and even all the episodes featured here that, that involve Muscular Beaver are homages and parodies to a lot of superhero shows that we watch and they manage to really execute each and every one of them really well. The biggest highlights for the episodes that really do favors for me are the epic thumb war between Daggett as Muscular Beaver and Norbert as the Baron and they have this epic thumb war which I thought was just so hilarious and it's just so over the top that it starts to really make me laugh my butt off every single time I watch this. With that said, all five of the Muscular Beaver episodes really get a solid spot on my number 10 spot. At number 9, we have a tie between Beaver Fever and Same Time as Last Week, which is also the airing order of these two episodes. Now, let's start off with Beaver Fever. Now, Norbert and Daggett compose their own song that a lot of the woodland creatures are totally getting into. This catches the attention of record deal managers, producers, agents and all the like and they start being very invested with their song and they think that they should have a recording session with them and ultimately this leads Norbert and Daggett to become very famous and even become one of the rich and famous as well and even find themselves on the Hall of Fame and this also leads to one of the most memorable music videos of the entire Angry Beavers Beaver Fever, and every time I listen to this song, I always get a huge nostalgia funk because, well, I've listened to the song several times when I was a kid, and it would usually play on commercials, and even when I caught the main episode, I still felt so, so nostalgic every time I listened to the song, not to mention when Norbert and Daggett were pretty much falling out of fame, only to be replaced by Barry Bear with his single, Oh Baby, sung by John Gary. I thought it was just so gorgeous and just so well done, which is no surprise because Barry Bear is basically uh, a homage to the late great jazz singer Barry White. What, with his deep voice and cool attitude, he pretty much emulates Barry, Barry White. And it's also thanks to John Gary's really smooth and really, really um, deep sounding basso voice, which really makes Barry come alive. And ultimately, well, Norbert and Daggett fall from fame and it leads to Barry the Bear, well, ending up, a ending up with all the fame. And then we get to Same Time Next Week. 
in which it's basically the Angry Beavers version of Groundhog Day, in which Daggett has a calendar that shows that he's got a lot of ways that he can annoy and really piss off Norbert every single day of the week, like bobbing him while Norbert is watching one of his favorite movies and flushing him down the toilet, placing jalapenos, and even like pushing him down the hole, and a lot of other things that really piss off Norbert. And well, every single time Norbert tells and warns Daggett that if he dares bop him one more time, he is going to bop him all the way to next week. And when Daggett still persists, Norbert says, you asked for it. And then he completely wails it on Daggett. The first time he does it, Daggett goes through a certain loop hole made of psychedelic colors. And then he lands on Sunday once again. And the second time Norbert does it, he misses. Daggett teases him and then he just completely wails it on him again. And I find this episode really hilarious because, well, let's face it, even though Daggett was kind of a douchebag in this episode, constantly annoying Norbert, all because of that freaking calendar, I have to say that the, the moments where Norbert punched Daggett with his boxing glove, I thought were just so hilarious, especially when Daggett ended up spoiling the entire film for Norbert, does he unleash the big one? And that is knocking him all the way back to the prehistoric ages. And Daggett is totally surprised by that, that he decides that he might as well take advantage of the situation and annoy his brother all the damn time. So overall, these two episodes were memorable and even left me with a huge dose of nostalgia that makes me feel like a kid again. All thanks to these two awesome episodes. At number eight, we have yet another tie that is Box Top Beavers and Salmon Says, which also, just like with number nine, also aired that way too. So let's talk, let's start off with Box Top Beavers. And this starts off with, well, Norbert and Daggett collecting box tops, just like the Harold episode. Um, Sally's Comet, but this time they want a very special prize like the certain hovercraft that they've, ad that they've seen advertised. And well, while Norbert is very tactful and mindful of how he uses and even manages to really take care of his box tops, Daggett is rather um, manic about it, even to the point where with Norbert's uh, constant, well, getting better prizes, prizes than Daggett, we could really understand that, yeah, Daggett is completely rash when it comes to getting all the box tops needed and usually involving him getting, like, usually meager prices. But with Norbert's handling of the box tops, he usually get, like, better prices than Daggett until Norbert, like, tells him how it's done and he has to... Like, he has to tell Daggett that the, the key to getting better prices from box tops is that you gotta have patience, you have to eat all the cereal, and, well, when Daggett finally gives into patience, Norbert congratulates him, and then they can get that one prize that they've always wanted, only to find themselves in the packaging company, and then delivered to a little girl, and she finds out that she has beavers again, and she throws Norbert and Daggett to a huge pile of beavers that she's ended up getting from her prize prizes from her from her cereals that she's been eating. And I thought this episode was really hilarious, even to the point where Daggett found Tobot, but Norbert ended up having a better model of a robot. I thought that was just a huge highlight in this episode. And then we get to Salmon Says, in which we see a lot of salmon spawning on Norbert's and Daggett's territory, and Daggett is completely annoyed that he wants all the salmon gone from their turf. 
And the cutest moments that I really liked was when Daggett came out in a boxer's uniform with helmet with a helmet and a lot of protective gear and his boxing gloves saying, You want a piece of trouble? Come now, Papa. And he proceeds to try to wail it out on the salmon. But unfortunately, the salmon seemed to get the better of him. And, well, Daggett ends up having another, well, whacked up scheme that he wants all the salmon away. So he uses that whacked up scheme. And when he thinks that he is victorious, he ends up singing Beaver La Beaver. And it's such an operatic voice. And he thinks he's won. But oops, the salmon keeps coming back. And I thought this episode was just so well done and just how how much of a screwball comedy this can be used and just how funny this really was and just how absolutely hilarious just to see Daggett like really try to like ward off all the salmon from their turf and well just every single moment that he does it it just makes me it just makes me laugh my butt off every single time. So overall, box top, box top beavers and um, what do you call this? Ah, salmon says are two episodes that have really made me laugh my butt off every single time. At number seven, we have Pond Scum. Now, it's nothing new seeing a lot of episodes where some of the characters like go bad. I mean, you have Eugene goes bad when he finds out that. The Abdicator, one of his favorite superheroes of all time, was just merely an actor needing a stuntman and is totally different from the Abdicator that he's seen on screen. And then you get the Pepperan episode, um, what do you call this? Ah, Nikki Gone Bad, where Pepperan totally feels that Nikki is pretty much too much of the perfect girl, so she decides to, um change up her image only to realize that Nikki just does not want that image. This episode is totally surreal in the character gone bad um, type of trope in, in a way that makes its execution all the more interesting and pretty much very surreal. There is like pond scum spawning in the beaver's dam and well, what do you know, Norbert gets infected by it and completely acts like another person, even to the point where he has to act like such a punk, talking in a very southern accent, de dressing up in punk clothing, greaser clothing with a leather jacket and blue jeans and black leather boots combined with a, with a white undershirt and acting like such a greaser. And my favorite moment is when um, Norbert threatens Daggett that he's playing with scissors and that he's cramping the, his style and he should get the heck out of his way only for the pond scum to reveal itself. And Daggett is just rather um, terrified by its presence and especially of how Norbert changed for the worse. This leads to an epic race to the death with Norbert and Daggett racing each other all the way to the waterfalls only to have the pond scum like totally scared and just leave Norbert's body once and for all and the episode ends itself really well. So overall this was yet an episode that I really enjoyed to this very day mostly because this is an episode that has made me laugh and it's also an interesting twist on the character gone bad trope. And with this, it's all thanks to one minor character that was certainly memorable in this episode, the Pond Scum, who really made Norbert get in touch with his bad side. And we all like him for it in a very weird way. And especially considering that Norbert dressed up like a greaser with the usual attire, I thought he looked really cute in that. At number six, we have Up All Night and its sequel, Up All Night 2, Up All Day, The Reckoning. Now let's start off with Up All Night. At first, Norbert and Daggett plan to go to sleep, but Daggett keeps on twitching and twirling, leading to Norbert saying that now that they're bachelors, they can stay up 
as long as they want. And at first, Daggett is rather reluctant. But Norbert manages to convince him, being the charmer that he is, and tells him that they can do whatever the hell they want. Like eating jalapenos, watching a lot of late night horror movies, crank calling. Unfortunately, this also takes a toll on them as well. As in the in the ending of the episode, we see Norbert and Daggett in a sort of stupor, laughing at themselves and just telling themselves that they see a lot of weird things happening. Only to have them wake up and realizing that they've stayed up all the way to the future. And then we get to the sequel episode, Up All Day the Reckoning, in which now Norbert's and Daggett's pad, or even Dan, has been, well, crowded with a flock of sheep. And they try to find their way out of this, this really new and interesting situation, but unfortunately, every time they try, they manage to get themselves screwed over, even to the point where the sheep end up taking over the entire world, insert of course joke here, from M. Bison from the Street Fighter movie. And I thought these two episodes were just really well done. I mean, the fact that Norbert and Daggett would try to stay up all night only to have it backfire and realize that they woke up in the future and also to have them being run over by sheep in the sequel even to the point where the sheep end up taking over the, the entire world as soon as Norbert and Daggett sleep I thought it was just so hilarious so over the top and kind of thrilling as well at number four excuse me at number five we have Yet another Thai episode, Go Beavers and Big Top Beavers. And let's start off with Go Beavers, in which there is an American football game being played. And, well, unfortunately, the we have one team that ends up losing a lot, and, they, and the Beavers think that it's high time that they become the new players for this game. And, well, at first, they, they're they not that successful, but then they start getting the hang of this game and really start, like, they start, like, really winning and getting ahead of the game. And, well, this also leads to the huge touchdown kick and them landing on, on the blimp and then the blimp well, ends up exploding and almost crashes to the football stadium, leading to the band playing a lot of different compositions, like the Funeral March by Friedrich Chopin, and Take Me Out to the Ball Game, and When You're Happy and You Know It, Clap Your Hands, and a lot of other compositions. And I thought that the hugest highlight for this episode was really the band playing all these different compositions, and I thought... Every time they were on screen, I just wanted to laugh every single time. Mostly because, well, they were another source of great musical comedy. It makes me wonder why they aren't in more episodes. Please feature them in a lot more episodes. Because the band, they were just, and the members of the band were just the most memorable and hilarious one-time characters that I've seen. And I wish they could have been a lot more episodes. And then we get to the next one, um, Big Top Beavers, which, well, shows Norbert and Daggett getting a job at a carnival hosted by, well, Smelly Jim, who is a, who's a sort of quack ringmaster. And Norbert and Daggett proceed to do a lot of crazy acts for the circus. And, well, let's just say that not all and. and happily for Smelly Jim as he gets arrested by the police, but even then, this episode is filled to the brim with a lot of physical comedy and a lot of well-timed jokes and just a lot of great moments that can be found not only with Norbert and Daggett, but also with Smelly Jim as well. So overall, um, Go Beavers and Big Top Beavers are episodes that still make me laugh even to this very day, mostly because with 
Go Beavers, there was the band playing all these different compositions. At number four, we have Friends, Romans, Beavers, in which we see Norbert and Daggett on a tour bus, and they want to go into the, the Coliseum to watch a hockey game. Unfortunately, due to Daggett's constant annoyances to the bus driver, they end up tearing through a portal in time and fling themselves into ancient Rome, where they encounter a lot of, well, stuff that happened in ancient Rome, like the architecture, and even entering the Colosseum itself, where they're greeted by the Caesar and his advisor. And not to, not to mention, since they've gotten themselves into be the position of gladiators, they encounter a gladiator. Daggett easily defeats the gladiator by a single bite to the finger. And then the Caesar then proclaims that, well, the gladiator ends up being out by a huge swinging thumb. And then we have Norbert and Daggett trying to make their way out alive in terms of getting themselves into a lot of games set for the gladiators. And, well, when Norbert and Daggett want to hightail it out, they automatically release the giant thumb and try to take down the emperor. And when they're doing that, the giant thumb still goes on a rampage and we even hear an instrumental version of Largo al Factotum being played, with the giant thumb being swung all around, not just to the Caesar and his advisor and to Norbert and Daggett, but also to the lions as well. And we see Norbert fending himself against the lions, and then the Caesar and his advisor crashing through the ground. Another highlight of this episode is seeing the Biclops in this episode who is also a homage to the Harryhauser, Harryhausen, Harryhausen um, effects used in a lot of films like Jason and the Argonauts and um, a lot of other films that used stop motion. And the way that Daggett mentioned that the Biclops walked really funny was also due to the fact that this was also a pop culture reference well, mentioning how Harryhausen's and a lot of stop motion giant creatures really were and how they and how they walked and how it was a very um, tough process, especially to try to make these creatures walk in a very or even like move in a very um, mechanical yet very interesting way that seems very threatening and very exciting. So this episode was not only a homage to a lot of the Gladiator films, but also a homage to Harryhausen and even the Largo al Factotum instrumental being played in this episode was a major, major plus, especially considering that I enjoyed this episode because of it. At number three, we have Yak in the Sack Gets Thwacked. Talk about an episode that is a huge uh, reference to Dr. Seuss's tales. And talk about one episode that also takes great use of that. Now, there was no doubt that the Powerpuff Girls episode um, involving the Sandman was also using rhymes in terms of poems and it was also played out like a Dr. Seuss novel. But with this, it's also used to a great advantage, advantage considering that the Yak in the Sack is also a parody of the Cat in the Hat, in which one day Norbert and Daggett are playing board games on a rainy day until they find a sack that contains a yak that, well, changes everything of how Norbert and Daggett play. And this leads to a lot of whimsical and fun musical numbers sung by the yak only for Norbert and Daggett to not take it anymore, and they decide to rap to the yak that he has to get out of their turf. And they stuff the yak back into the sack, and they play um, badminton with it, and send the yak all the way to whence he came from. And, well, <laughs> this episode is definitely hilarious because this was also 
a homage to the Dr. Seuss story, Cat in the Hat. And not to mention, well, its title also kind of, kind of told everything we need to know what's going to happen in this episode as well. Kind of a spoiler, but still a very interesting homage to Dr. Seuss and his works. At number two, we have a tie between Norberto y Daghetto and El Grapadura y El Castor Malo and Dagsky and Norb. So let's start off with Norberto y Daghetto, as I call it for short. Now, this episode is just so hilarious because rarely have you seen an episode in which you just have the characters speaking in another language. In this case, you have Norbert and Daggett speaking Spanish, and even a lot of the characters in the show speaking Spanish, all thanks to yet another show that they watch and has also been well known in their universe, Grapadura, who is basically a luchador, a masked luchador, who only speaks in Spanish, and due to the fact that this episode is also a homage to a lot of these films done by Quentin Tarantino, most especially uh, Desperado, and a lot of the, a lot of the Mexican and Latino action films that we usually see, usually the ones starring Jorge Rivero, who I really, really like. And yeah, this episode was a great homage to a lot of the the Mexican and a lot of the Latino action films that have become quite the rage during the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And with Dagsky and Norb, this is also a homage to Starsky and Hutch. And this leads to Norbert and Daggett getting themselves on a very interesting case and to basically fight out bad guys just like their heroes from a lot of the 70s action shows. And, well, a lot of hijinks ensue from here on there. So overall, Norberto y Daghetto and Dagsky and Norb are two very memorable homages and parodies to the action movie genre. And you could really tell that Mitch Schauer and his crew did a lot of research involving these two episodes, not just watching the likes, likes of uh, Quentin Tarantino films like Pulp Fiction, but a lot of other luchador um, shows and even a lot of the um, masked wrestler traditions of Mexico and even a lot of the Latino action films. You could really tell that Mitch Schauer and his crew really went out of their way to really do a lot of research on these episodes. So that's why these two are number two on my list. And my number one favorite Angry Beavers episode is the day the, the day the world got really screwed up. The Halloween episode and one that people love to this very day. This is also an hour long, excuse me, a 30 minute episode and one that stars the Beaver's favorite icon and favorite actor of all time, Oxnard Montalvo, who is voiced by Tom Kane, who we all know as the professor from the Powerpuff Girls and Darwin from the Wild Thornberries. Basically, this involves Norbert and Daggett at first going out for trick-or-treating, only for them to encounter that there is a mansion where Oxnard Montalvo lives. So they decide to visit the man himself, only to have themselves, like, well, in a very interesting and very scary adventure involving a lot of monsters, creatures, and a lot of supernatural elements being released, even to the point where, well, all thanks to um, Montalvo's manservant, Manservante. And from there on end, there are a lot of epic moments found in this episode and a, a lot of very quotable lines as well not to mention a lot of star quality did you know that adrian barbeau was also in this episode and she also voiced taluka yeah that's pretty interesting trivia to be found in this episode and the entire atmosphere in this episode is just thrilling hilarious and just leaves you wondering what on earth is going to be next. 
And that's why the day the world got really screwed up is number one on my favorite Angry Beavers countdown. And now I ask this, what are your favorite episodes of Angry Beavers? Leave them on the comment section below. And tune in later where I also give a tribute video to the Angry Beavers. So until then, see you later everybody.